So if you have the key questions that investors have, and you're confident that those are the questions, um, most of you in the early stages of the business will not have proof that completely answers those questions. And so the second best thing you could do, rather than having the proof, is to show the investor that you have a process for getting to that answer. And what investors are looking at there is, is that process robust enough that when the answer comes out of the process, they believe it? And the second is, how much does it cost? What does it cost to get the, the, the proof that, that you need? So for example, um, you have spin brush, the electric toothbrush, and if the investor's concern is that the retailer is not going to put enough space uh, or not going to give you the space to put it on because companies like Procter & Gamble or Colgate have so much leverage on the retailer that, and do so much business that a single line company will not be able to get space. You could go back in and you can say, my process is that I have this medium-sized store, which is what John Osher did, and I'm going to get one little space in it through the process of putting up the product there. I'm going to watch exactly how people react and whether they buy the product or not. What actually happened in this case was um, he did this with one store, and in that store, they ended up selling seven toothbrushes a day. Now, it turns out that a regular manual toothbrush sells one a week with that much allocation. So when he comes back and says, this is the data that I got, which is in that same amount of space, I could sell 49 times as much toothbrushes. And by the way, each of these has twice the profit. It goes a long way in addressing the investor's concern about whether or not retailers will provide the space. At this point, you have the key uncertainties identified. And in this exercise, what we're going to do is take one of them, um, take the primary one that you have, and you should identify the process that you're going to use to, to deal with that uncertainty and to reduce that uncertainty. And in that, you should come up with what data do you expect to get. You take that and then show it to your partner and ask them if both the process and the data that comes out of that would be convincing. So as an example, you could start in the spin brush case and say if the uncertainty is whether or not retailers will place this new toothbrush on their shelves, you could go and just do a survey of retailers, or you could ask two or three retailers whether they do it. Or you could do what, what John Osha did, which is actually find somebody and put the, put the uh, toothbrush there and gather real data. The closer you can get in your process to actual behavior where customers are coming in and buying the product and paying money for it in some form, or the retailers actually putting the product in versus asking people how they would behave if they saw this product, the closer you can get to, to action rather than opinion, uh, the more powerful your test is going to be.